Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 363, Hormone Therapy and Long-Term Mortality. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. We are very excited this week to talk about an article that has come out in the most recent edition of JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Mm -hmm. When Dr. Maupin started her hormone focus as a, as a specialist in her practice about 15 years ago as a sidebar to her work as a gynecologist and obstetrician. There were concerns and criticisms in the mainstream medical community about the safety of doing hormone replacement therapy, especially for women, the safety of it, the efficacy of it, why would you do it, what about the side effects that could be damaging, and a number of, of doctors in town who didn't know, hadn't done the research that Dr. Malpin had done, were saying, well, she's a quack. She's just trying to sell something. Mm-hmm. This is just, she found a, a way to make high dollar money off of, you know, r- low reality medicine. <laughs> and the reason that so many doctors were doing that uh, at the time, uh, saying those things and believe those things, and many of them still do with 15 years later, mm-hmm is that the Women's Health Initiative had done a study on hormone replacement treatment. In the 1980s, hormone replacement treatment, especially estrogen repl- re- treatment for uh, postmenopausal women, took off. I mean, it mm-hmm. just skyrocketed. Everybody was talking about, it. oh, my God, this is a panacea. This will solve your problems. You get old with grace. You get old with dignity. You get old with beauty. efficacy. You'd be young and beautiful. And that, it was true. I mean, it really maintained That's- people's health. And so they decided, well, let's study this to see if it's true. And they started this study, and they got some early results back, the Women's Health Initiative. And they interpreted those results, and they said, oh, my God, they're all dying from cancer. So they said, don't do hormone replacement therapy. It'll kill you. But that's what they said. That's what they said. And so then the market crashed. Yeah. And and people said, oh, you can't do that because you get breast cancer. You get some other kind of cancer. You have a heart attack. You die. And doctors said... I don't want to get sued for writing prescriptions for it. Right. But it was in their, it was in their, um, it was an advantage to them to not talk about hormone therapy because it takes a long discussion. And in, in those days as now. And you have to know something. Well, yeah, you have to do your research. You have to read your journals. So they already knew the party line from before that, Mm -hmm. but this really helped them out because they could just get you out of their office really fast. They just go, I don't do it. I don't, I don't do hormone replacement therapy. And I it's, don't think you should do it's it either. Da- well, I don't write it. I don't right. write a prescription. Right. So they would say that, and then the patient has nothing else to say. What is she going to do? Try to get him to do something he doesn't, and I'm saying him, because they mostly were hims in 2002. Well, but, but that was a way for him to get through his day faster. So he, they love that though, answer. It, it also was exacerbated by the media. The media because made the media it was so running much around, you know, Like Chicken Little, the sky's falling, the sky's falling. The media was running around with all these articles and news uh, releases about women dying from cancer because they had hormone replacement therapy. And so the marketplace became concerned. And there you were, a mm-hmm. voice in the wilderness, saying, wait a minute, I don't believe this. That's not what I am aware of. That's not what the research I've seen shows. There has to be something else. When you take care of people for over 20, at that time, over 20 years, I've been taking care of women. And I would watch, I knew every person in my practice that got breast cancer. Mm-hmm. And I knew if they'd ever been on hormones or not. Right. And I kept a running tally. I mean, before that, because I was just, because... I, you know, well, my data, you know, me, I mean, I mean, I'm kind of like, I want to see if, if this has any effect. And what I found was people who had never taken any kind of estrogen had just the same risk as people who had take, taken estrogen in breast cancer, just the same risk. It didn't, it didn't matter. And that the ones that had had taken estrogen had a lower grade or a less aggressive tumor. 
And then, then they did a study and that was confirmed long after, long after, long after people damned women to no estrogen. Well, so other doctors similar to you mm -hmm. began to say, wait a minute, something is wrong here. This, this doesn't match my reality. It doesn't mm -hmm. make sense to me medically. Mm -hmm. So they did a follow-up study and they determined that they had jumped too soon to a conclusion of course. for the Women's Health Initiative. Mm -hmm. Medical professionals did. Mm -hmm. And they did some research and they said, the problem isn't the hormone replacement therapy. It's not the estrogen. It's the progestin mm -hmm. that they were taking. Women who still have a womb mm -hmm. who are postmenopausal can still bleed if you give them too much estrogen. Right. And so they were having problems with that. And, and then they developed other problems like... But we gave them, we could give them progesterone, natural progesterone, but right. at the time there was no natural progesterone unless you went to a compounding pharmacy. You made it up yourself. Or you gave them Provera. And it turns out that Provera um, was really the issue that caused some of the cancers to be uh, slightly so higher. the numbers did go up a little bit, but it was a unique combination of estrogen and Provera. Right. Okay. Not estrogen, progesterone, because that doesn't do it. Right. Natural progesterone doesn't do it. Right. So that's what they had to find out. Mm -hmm. So then they did find that out, and they came back and they said, okay, so the issue wasn't the estrogen, it was the Provera, mm -hmm. and we canceled the study too soon, so the conclusions are not valid. Mm -hmm. So doctors who did the research discovered, you know what, this is a safe thing to do, <laughs> and it may be... A helpful thing for your female patients to get hormone mm -hmm. replacement therapy. So there still began to be a market uh, for women replacing their hormones as they age. But in this city, there's still mostly men go, I'm not doing it. Right. I'm not doing it. You can't have it. So they're preventing right. their patients from being better. Still a lot of that out there. Well, now, 18 years later, <laughs> the American Medical Association is publishing an article in JAMA that says there is a 17-year 17, 17 follow-up study where they followed some 27,347 women for a, a, 17 a years study. who received hormone replacement therapy for either 5.3 years or 7.6 years. Mm -hmm. And he said, for all-cause mortality... There is no statistical difference between women who never received hormone replacement therapy and women who received what's called long-term mm -hmm. hormone replacement therapy. So what they are now saying is two things. One, we can't prove that there's any association with hormone replacement therapy and increased heart attacks, increased breast cancer, increased cancer, increased death effect from any cause if you've taken hormone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. The second thing they're saying is we can't prove, mainly because all the data has been pooled and we, we haven't, it hasn't been studied separately, we can't prove that hormone replacement therapy effectively protects you from mm -hmm. these things. We can only prove now it doesn't lead to these things. So there's more work that needs to be done. But the exciting thing is that JAMA is saying to doctors across the world, you guys need to basically forget about the world. It's like having whiplash. It's they, like, yeah. First, they tell us we can Who do it. Who was that mass man? And then they tell us we can't. And then we tell, yeah. you know, I mean, the whiplash is every 20 years. But, I yeah. mean, it's still, it's still it's changing. Whiplash. It's a slow whiplash. Yeah. It's yeah. changing what physicians do by what they're, the AMA or the journal, or excuse me, or the College of OBGYN says. You know, they came out with this right after the WHI that, ACOG comes out with this, you can't, you can't take estrogen longer than three years. There was no data that said that. And then, oh, but then it was a few years later, oh, you can't take it longer than seven years. Then, it, you know, so all of my patients, when they get to me, they're very confused by right. all of these different pieces and, of and advice. And legitimately so. They're different doctors tell them different things, but, but they tell them different things with absolute certainty. Right. And I have to say that studies change the opinion of studies change a lot over time we right. have more information and sometimes the information is false or like, wrong or wrong yeah, completely wrong well just like the WHI study they rush to a conclusion mm -hmm. that's right so 
So, but there are other studies that they have not looked at. Especially in Europe. Especially in Europe, but even studies here that show that estrogen preserves life, that you estrogen replacement therapy makes you live longer, healthier lives. Now, they're just looking at death. So I think there's a big difference between living a long, healthy life with good bones and, and not having osteoporosis and not being in a nursing home and or being a cardiac cripple. I mean, they, they basically just say death. They don't say, do you have a quality of life? But some of these studies show quality of life is much better with estrogen and right. the rate of death is is the same if you take it or you don't take it, or it might even be lower. So it won't kill you. It may not help you live longer, but it'll help you live better. Right. So, you know. So that's a huge thing. And they're even in this study, they're using oral estrogens. So the difference between oral estrogen and non-oral, like what we use is pellets, but you can also use patches. Those, the difference between oral and non-oral is that the oral can cause blood clots, okay, in people who are susceptible to blood right. clots, not in everyone, but certain genetically uh, at-risk people. Oral estrogen can do that, but non-oral does not cause blood clots. Well, and another thing so, we need to talk about, because so far in this discussion, it's all been about estrogen as the hormone replacement of choice mm -hmm. or of concern mm -hmm. or interest. There are other hormones that mm -hmm. people could consider having replaced because as we age, our hormone production system declines and mm -hmm. hormones that our bodies have always had and always used for various functions begin to diminish and those functions thereby begin mm -hmm. to diminish. Right. Another hormone that you need to look at or consider is the loss of testosterone. Mm -hmm. For women and Especially men. Especially for women. But, but you know, the, in doing this for 15 years and pushing it back against the system, saying, wait a minute, I have other research. I have other data. I have My binders patients. full of research that shows that testosterone is a benefit to women. And that's all posted on your website. Mm -hmm. People can go and look for it. And, and we, you and I, have encouraged other physicians, go and look at the data. Mm -hmm. And they say, well, I don't have time for that. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's I'd rather be wrong. I learned this in med school and they wouldn't 40 have years ago. Yeah. Uh, nothing's changed. <laughs> haven't learned years. anything. Yeah. Did you, did you do 40 years of medicine or did, uh, did you learn over 40 years or did you do one year, 40 times? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I try to learn something a lot every all year the time. <laughs> and stay up with the current thinking and twists and turns. And so, but remember what I always do is I say, this is the new thought. They come out with a headline. Yeah. And then I go, Nah, that does not, that doesn't size up with what I've seen my whole life. Right. So then I go look at the article. And even after I read the WHI study myself, at, initially, I said, that's the Provera, that's not the estrogen. Right. I mean, I could tell by reading the study. Yeah. But it appears that no one else seemed to read the study. You have well, to be able to be curious enough. Truth be told, to a lot look of for the truth. Don't know how to figure out statistical significance. Doctors should. We take statistics. And I hated it, but I use it. <laughs> I mean, that's in a part of our training. I'm just here to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> you have to face reality. Yeah. Most of them don't. Wow. And they don't have time. Right. You know, I'm busy treating sick people. I'm busy trying to figure out why this kid has measles or why this woman is having back pains. And I want to make this symptom go away. Mm -hmm. So they're not research physicians, most of them. Mm -hmm. They're not doing the research. And what we found out, sadly, is they're not reading the research either. Not, there's, doctors are supposed to stay current on their specialty. Mm -hmm. And there are journals that come out. And there are CEUs that they have to take. Now, some of the CEUs that they take really aren't about medicine. They're about new, uh, they may be about new drugs. Mm -hmm. But some of them are about, like, how to run your office, how to run mm -hmm. your practice, how to deal with insurance, how to deal with government regulations. And there's more of that all the time. And there's more of that all the time. So it's less and less about how to learn what you need to know about medicine to help people heal and live longer, healthier lives. I, you know, where, I mean, curiosity is really an important part about being a doctor because when you have somebody who's a patient that you just can't figure out, yeah. it's important that you figure that out because you're going to see a similar patient to that someday and you have to learn how to get that patient to a, an, a good answer. But starting in the 80s, I would have like little old ladies with their, 
their bottoms were so thin from no hormone, no testosterone, no estrogen, that they would have bed sores on their bottoms right. from just sitting because their skin was so fragile. And uh, they would come to my office. I had nothing for them. So I go to a pharmacist who compounds things. I said, so what can I do for these women? I have a problem with no answer that's in medicine currently. Right. So they helped me figure out something to mix testosterone in. So we would mix up testosterone in, believe it or not, Vaseline, have them put it on their bottoms every night, problem solved. No more bed sores, no more infection, no more anything. But I wasn't a, I, I didn't write a study. I just did it myself and I told my partners about it and they did it. But that was one of those things where medicine doesn't always have an answer to everything. So and then, you so have to be creative. in the community. <laughs> if you have a sore bottom, go see Kathy Moffat. That's right. That's true. And all these little old ladies, would, would, they'd come from this one nursing oh. home and they'd be like driving, looking underneath the steering wheel, coming in their big Cadillacs. And moving very slow. Yeah. Very I mean, it was careful. really cute. You could see, we were on the first floor, so we could see yeah. them see drive the up. Yeah. <laughs> it was great because they were so happy. You would have thought that I cured cancer. Well, but, but you know, the, when your skin begins to break down, there's so many infections that are opportunistic mm -hmm. that you can get that lead to other things that shorten your longevity or shorten your your ability to function the mm -hmm. way you desire to If function. it hurts every time we sit down, we're, we're never yeah. going to sit down. And these little gals didn't have enough muscle mass to stand, to stand up, up all, all the time. Yeah. And they were miserable so all they were the time. falling. And at that age, yeah. then, you know, the, the death cycle often starts with somebody falling and breaking a hip or a leg. So if you think about it, that's how medicine should work. And even when I was working 36 hours at a time, I still had enough of that time to... Enough of that curiosity to make the time. To, to, to go to somebody who knew. You can go to an older doctor. You can go to a doctor of a different specialty, like for nutrition. Nobody in my specialty knew anything in the 80s about nutrition and vitamin deficiencies and other things that vitamins and nutrients could do. So I went to a psychiatrist named Gary Vicker. He was the brilliant mind of what vitamins and, and nutrition can do. So I would go to him and ask questions, and I'd learn, and he'd give me books to read. Then I would go to the pharmacist who knew everything about hormones, but he had to, we had to tell him what to do. We had to write a prescription. So he'd tell me what to write. And then I'd try it. It wasn't dangerous. It was just, and he was right every time. That yeah. was Pete. Pete would give me the right formula every single time. I still call him. Yes, I know. So these are things that doctors should have enough time to do. And unfortunately, we're trying to run our office and do a business, which is, is difficult for doctors. Well, and, We're not trained on that. You're pushing the rock uphill like Sisyphus <laughs> because the hill is public opinion and training for doctors and federal regulations and mm -hmm. the, the medical marketplace. And all of that is pushing back saying, you know, hormone replacement therapy can kill you. It's not validated. It, and now it, we're validated. And now it's validated. So <laughs> now we got the answer that I've been saying. There's going to be the an memo. answer. Yes. Yeah. Well, more and more doctors are, are getting that answer. And mm -hmm. you, you belong to two different international organizations for doctors that specialize in this approach to medicine. Mm -hmm. And they're growing exponentially because sure. they're getting results. People are seeing mm -hmm. the difference in parents and grandparents who are still alive who are still functional, who still live independently, who are not using walkers or canes, mm -hmm. who have good balance and strong muscles. And all of that comes from replacing testosterone, replacing estrogen, replacing thyroid, replacing the hormones that you need to have replaced in the right balance. And that's what keeps, that keeps you healthy as you age. We can't stop the year years happening, but we can be a lot healthier than the people in the generation before us. Yes. As we get older, and that's my goal. My goal is to have all my patients and any patients who are reading my book and our book and our, our next book on men, which is the same thing. It's testosterone to keep you healthy. So I'm, I want them to live independent, healthy lives all the way to the point where we, we still die of something, but we don't have a long time, long term dependent time in our lives. We have a very short yeah. get sick and die kind of no, thing. It's time to go, go. Right, but, but not stretch drag it out. it out in a nursing home. Yeah. So, I'm, I mean... Well, you know, I've always called nursing homes body storage facilities. It kind you of just park them somewhere is. and wait for them to die. Right, because we, in general, most of us are so busy, we can't take care of our own parents. 
Yeah. Or we don't have the facility or we can't lift or something. Or we don't want to or our parents <laughs> don't want us to. Yeah, that's right. Or they, yeah, they're opposed to us moving them in and out of bed and things like that. So I have a, I have a neighbor who's 93 years old, still lives independently. Still, she's a stubborn old farm woman. And she's, <laughs> well, good for her, actually. Oh, my God. She, so I decided to start picking her paper up out of the yard and throwing it up on her front porch because mm -hmm. I saw her one morning appear with a cane to go out and get it. And she's worried about her balance. And she tells me, well, I haven't fallen yet, but, but I'm, <laughs> but I'm waiting, to. but I'm, yeah, I'm expecting it to happen any day. I said, well, I'll start throwing your paper up. So I threw her paper up on the front porch for about a week. Yesterday, she called me and said, don't do that anymore. I need to go out and get it. So, I need the exercise. Exactly. And, and the sense of independence mm -hmm. is still so critical for her that, that she wants to live an independent life. I mean, mm -hmm. she's sweet, she's friendly, she'd do anything for you, but she's tottering and she's fragile and she's mm -hmm. 93 and she knows it. Mm -hmm. And she's outlived everybody. Yeah, and yeah. that's not fun either. But no. But had we gotten to her 20 years ago, she may not be as fragile. Yes, exactly. And so she could still live alone or on her own and she still might and outlive she could run, everybody. Run out and get the paper. Yeah, but then she could yeah, then Catch she it. wouldn't feel so out of balance when yeah. she But that's good. I mean, that's a really good mindset. Yeah. I need to get the exercise. So right. we can all keep that in mind as we then take a deep breath. Estrogen as I've said for years is good for you after menopause. It, and then you don't need all those other drugs like for osteoporosis and all these other things. You have your estrogen that does the job and then testosterone Helps it work even better. Makes you healthier, saves you money, helps you avoid other illnesses that make you miserable, mm -hmm. helps you live longer. And doesn't cause cancer. And, so, does, and, and that's very important. All cause mortality. 18 years, 17 year study follow up with over 37,000 women. That's a statistically significant accumulation. And they of, weren't of kids. They, the average age the, was- The average age was 50 to, to 64. Yeah. Tw between 50 and 64, I think the average age was 62.4 mm -hmm. when they went on hormone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. And they were on it for between five and seven years. So constitutes what's considered a long-term mm -hmm. uh, thing, usage. No positive correlation with increased death rates from any cause, especially cancer, heart attack, uh, breast cancer. So revisit this conversation with your physician. Make them aware. Ask them if they read in JAMA this new research that's come out. And we'll put a, um, we will attach this to our blog. Yeah. And, or our, um, yeah, we'll have that. So we will, we'll have it available so you can print it off and you can take it to your take doctor. So I want some of that. Yeah. Yeah. Do you give this to your mother? Would you? Yeah. Well, I take it and I'll take it till I die. Yeah. So. No, I'm saying you can go and ask your doctor, <laughs> is your mother still alive? Do you give her this? Because I want it. A lot of those doctors send yeah. their patients to me. Yes. <laughs> their, their patients, not patients, but mothers, family. Family. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.